This video is sponsored by Skillshare. In today's video, we're gonna talk about what's ruining your bird photography, part three. This is a series that I like to do where I talk about issues related to gear, settings, technique, mentality, all revolved around bird photography and issues that we can have in the field as bird photographers. Today's video is a special edition. It's the Stefano edition. So these are problems that I had in my first year of bird photography that I think really held me back from moving to the next level. Most of these will be technique and mentality related, but the first one has to do with editing and that's global adjustments. Every time I would bring in a photo into Lightroom or Photoshop to edit, I would do these global adjustments that affect the image as a whole. So if I increased exposure, contrast, saturation, all those things would adjust the foreground, background, and the bird itself. And what I've realized over the years is once I'm able to actually isolate different parts of the image and edit them separately, I'm able to get a much more pleasing result that was way more similar to what the scene actually was in real life versus me just editing the image as a whole. And one thing that I really used to do when I start was I call it taking the saturation slide for a walk. I used to crank up that saturation so high and as you can imagine the results were really funky but I wanted to get more saturation in the birds usually and that would also mean that I'm affecting the background if I did everything globally so if I can find my first bird image that I ever took I'll put it over here because it's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know how I ever thought this actually looked good but if you're in a similar boat I do have a video on my channel where I talk about tips for Lightroom and editing tips that I like to use on a daily basis when I'm editing inside of Lightroom so I'll link that up above if you want to check it out. The next thing that was ruining my bird photography was planting my feet. Every time I would find a bird I'd take the camera put it up find it in the viewfinder and my feet would not move I don't even think my entire body would move I would just stay like a cement statue stuck in one position and the odds that I would stop in the perfect spot and get a beautiful photo were so low especially now that I've been doing bird photography for a few years what I've realized is you need to work a subject so that's a common term you'll hear is working a subject and that just means that you're not really staying fixated in one spot sometimes you're going you're crouching down you're getting higher up on your tippy toes or something to get a better angle sometimes you're moving a meter to the side meter to the left you really need to work around the subject especially if it's moving to get these different backgrounds and try to get the most pleasing shot possible so planting my feet it took me probably a good year to break that habit and if you have it just try to be conscious of it and try to break it as much as possible unless you're in a great spot which doesn't happen often for me anyways i usually have to move around and get into a better angle but this was a big problem for me and it was amplified even more with the next thing that was ruining my bird photography and that was fixating on the birds when i would stop and get the bird in my viewfinder i'd be completely oblivious to everything else happening in the scene and i just fixate on the bird and what would happen is at the end of the day when i'm done shooting I'd come home thinking I have so many great photos and when I pull them up on the computer there's just really distracting backgrounds branches going through the bird sometimes branches through the back and when I would see those photos in the beginning I would always say oh it's just because my gear is not that good if I had better gear these photos would actually be nice but that's totally untrue that's just a lie that we tell ourselves to justify the bad photos we took a bad scene is a bad scene if you have harsh light branches going through the bird really distracting elements all around the photo is going to be bad no matter what the gear and the only way to really fix that in the field is one don't plant your feet move around and work your subject and two don't fixate on the bird the background and the foreground could be equally as important in the scene as the bird itself so yes you could look at the bird obviously and see what it's doing but try to focus on what's behind it what's in front of it and that's going to lead to more appealing photos that doesn't have anything to do with gear it's just really technique related and those were two things that really took me a long time to kind of straighten out and figure out and break out of my usual habit but when i did i noticed my photos took a leap in quality the next thing that was ruining my bird photography is not knowing my bird calls. You don't know pain until you've chased the bird for half an hour or an hour only to find out that it's a chickadee or another common species. It's so disappointing and the reality is most of the time you're going to hear more birds than you'll actually see, especially in the spring and summertime. So knowing my bird calls meant that I was able to hone in on specific calls and I was following birds that I actually wanted to photograph. And a good suggestion is even if you don't want to learn all the bird calls because there is a lot of them, at least learn the really really common species so that when you hear something you can at least by process Process of elimination eliminate the common species out of it the next issue is another one that took me a while to break the habit and that's always taking the same photos 
when we work with subjects frequently that we see almost every outing, it is really easy to just keep taking the same old photos over and over again. So one thing that I really had to start doing was think about the photos that I already have. And when I would find a bird that I already photographed before, I would think, is this photo better or is it different enough that it makes sense to take it? And if it wasn't, I would try to put myself in a different position. Sometimes just changing your angle up, getting a different background, maybe getting it on a different perch can play a huge part in getting a variety of images. And what I realized is the more I was comparing what I already have to the photos that I'm getting in the field, and the more I'm able to just say, you know what, this scene, I already have a photo exactly like this. Let me get a different angle my photos just started getting better and better. And I think the main reason for that was when I was first starting off, I was in a little safety bubble where I just wanted to get the shots. I wanted the record shots. I wanted my first photos of those birds. So a lot of times I was just trying to get a basic photo. I didn't really pay attention too much about the scene and the background and all that good stuff. But over time, as I became more conscious about my photos, I was able to break out of that bubble and really start getting a variety of different shots and not just the same old boring shots that I was getting before. So try that with your own photography. If you have subjects that you see all the time in the field look at the photos you already have and see how you can either make them better or different maybe going after different behavior different lighting conditions different weather conditions just to round out your portfolio get a bunch of different images and really break out of that initial bubble of just taking the same photos over and over again before i get into the last issue that was ruining my bird photography i'd just like to thank skillshare for sponsoring this video skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives their classes cover a ton of topics ranging from photography, videography, editing, lifestyle, freelancing, all the way to making paper mache birds. I kind of really want to make these to be honest. I recently shared with you that I'm diving deeper and deeper into becoming a full-time creative over the next year or so. And because of that, I wanted to find some hacks or some tips to help me with productivity. So I've been taking the productivity for creatives class taught by Thomas Frank. In this class, he just shares a lot of his real world experiences with how he streamlines his own work. And I find when somebody just shares their own stories like this, it just makes the whole learning experience more memorable and more enjoyable. Skillshare's classes are divided into these easy to follow lessons with no ads, so you can really just focus on learning. There's a nice flow to the videos too, and I like the fact that I can go at my own pace, especially with a busy schedule, and then just hop back in whenever I want. All of their premium classes are available for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, so it's really affordable. And right now, we're giving away free trials of Skillshare premium memberships at the first thousand of my subscribers that join using the link below. So check it out. There's a bunch of amazing learning opportunities. And thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So the last thing that was ruining my bird photography was not spending time away from the camera. Every time I would go out, I'd always bring my camera and I'd be focused on getting photos, even if the conditions weren't that good. But what I've learned over the years, especially since I've been doing breeding bird surveys and nest surveys, is that you're nowhere near as observant with a camera as you are when you're just watching the birds, maybe with binoculars, or just watching them move around in their habitat just with your naked eye. The biggest advantage we have as bird photographers is to know and anticipate the bird's behavior. And sometimes that means just observing the bird, not worrying too much about photos, even if that means just putting away your camera for 20 minutes just to watch a bird especially in the instances when the conditions just aren't right or the bird's too high there's no use in really taking photos at that point you might as well just watch and see what it's doing and try to anticipate where it's going next and the great thing about birds is that they're creatures of habit so they have their routine in place they have their favorite perches drinking spots feeding spots there's a good saying that i think really applies to wildlife photography and that's once is chance twice is coincidence and three times is a pattern and when i'm in the field i'm always trying to pick up on these patterns so if i see an interesting behavior or a bird's perch in a certain area i'll take note of it and the next time i'm there i'm trying to see if i can get repeatable behavior in the same spot so always think critically about your interactions even if it's something as minimal as you know you're walking down a trail and you saw a bird flush try to figure out okay it flushed from this tree why was it in this tree was it just roosting was it feeding on berries maybe it has a nest there so always think critically about your interactions and it's going to take your images way further way quicker i hope you enjoyed this video and that you found some of the tips helpful thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next one happy birding <laughs>